In the late 1950s, everyone was captivated by space exploration. But there was a group of rebels who wondered not what's out there, but what's down there. This team called themselves the American Miscellaneous Society. Yes, that's their real name. And they started one of the biggest projects ever, Project Mahalo. Joyful and determined, they had no idea what a nightmare they started. First, let's understand what the project was about. You probably know that Earth is like a giant onion. If you cut it in half, you'd see it's made of layers. Each one is different from the next. The crust is what we all stand on. It's incredibly thin, like the skin of an apple. It's made of tectonic plates, almost like puzzle pieces, and they float on the layer beneath. That layer is the mantle. It's mostly solid, made of rock, but these rocks flow and move very slowly, just a little bit over thousands of years. They're also incredibly hot, thousands of degrees Fahrenheit. So it's a bunch of scorching stones moving around like caramel syrup. And when the mantle moves, the tectonic plates above move as well. Usually, this movement is slow and harmless. We don't even notice it. But sometimes they can bump into each other, get stuck and so on. And when they do, they send such horrifying vibrations through the ground that they're hard not to notice. These vibrations are called seismic waves. In 1909, a Croatian scientist, Andrija Morhorovicic, noticed something weird. Turns out, at a certain depth, seismic waves suddenly speed up. He didn't yet realize that he stumbled upon a boundary between the crust and the mantle. It became known as the Moho boundary. Now, try to guess what the Project Mahalo guys decided to do. It was during a meeting of the National Science Foundation. Everyone was discussing current scientific progress. Suddenly, Walter Monk, a geophysicist and oceanographer, casually threw out a take that shocked the room. Why not drill all the way down to the mantle? His idea was outrageous. Drill through the ocean floor, deep into the planet's skin, reach the moho, and see what it's all about. Never mind the fact that the ocean is crazy deep with crushing temperatures and violent currents. Super bold, but not entirely out of nowhere. If we start from the ocean floor, the moho lies just about three to six miles below it. It's much easier than starting from land. That would require digging from 10 to 60 miles deep. That made the oceans the best bet for reaching it. Monk wasn't the only one. Harry Hess, one of his colleagues, was just as excited about the time. At the time, people didn't know much about plate tectonics. Hess was one of the founders of that theory, believing that the world is made up of giant moving plates. To him, it was great. Drilling to the mantle would give him evidence to prove that theory. They became a team and found more like-minded scientists. They combined the most brilliant minds in Earth science, Roger Revelle, Maurice Ewing, and Arthur Maxwell. They called themselves miscellaneous because there were all sorts of scientists in the team. Poor guys didn't know that their playful name would later come back to haunt them. But the NSF was dumbfounded by their idea at first and rejected it because, duh, it would be a nightmare to pull off. So our team secured $50,000 just to make a plan. Then they presented the official banner. Luckily, Science was on the rise, and there were rumors about other countries trying their own deep drilling projects. So, the AMS got the green light this time. The plan consisted of three phases. Phase 1. Do a drilling test. Check how things are going. Phase 2. Build an intermediate drilling vessel. Phase 3. Keep going until they reach the Moho. And they got a funding of a whopping $2.5 million. And finally, in March and April 1961, the project finally began. Phase one took place off the coast of Guadalupe Island, Mexico. They used a converted barge called CUS-1 and some insane brain moves to make it work. Originally, CUS-1 was made for drilling oil offshore. It was one of the best things we had for drilling in deep water. But a catch was that it could only go a few hundred feet down. And remember, 
we need at least three miles. The team had to come up with something revolutionary, dynamic positioning. It's a tech that allowed the ship to stay perfectly still in the middle of the ocean, even without an anchor. It worked like this. They dropped six buoys into the water, forming a circle around the ship. These buoys sent underwater echoes to help the ship understand where it's located. Using motors and a joystick, the crew could keep Cus-1 right in the center of the circle. And surprisingly, they started making progress. Even though ocean drilling is incredibly hard, they drilled through thick layers of sediment and reached an astonishing 600 feet below the seafloor, about two Statues of Liberty. And the seafloor itself was almost 12,000 feet deep. This was just the beginning. Deep down, they stumbled upon tons of basalt, a type of volcanic rock. It doesn't surprise us now, but for that time, this achievement was groundbreaking. Turns out, they got through Miocene-age sediments, rocks formed millions of years ago. This discovery told us so much about the history of our planet. Now the entire world held its breath. Even the famous writer John Steinbeck, the author of East of Eden and The Grapes of Wrath, got caught up in the excitement. He joined the project and wrote a dramatic article about it for Life magazine. He wrote that we knew less about the ocean floor than we knew about the moon. That line stuck. The biggest surprise was that President John F. Kennedy sent a telegram congratulating the team. It's like the space race turned into inner space. And for a brief moment, it looked like they just might do it. But years later, Walter Monk said that the very success of phase one doomed the project. The early triumph raised expectations sky high. From the start, the miscellaneousness of this society led to tons of disagreements, logistical hurdles, and the costs just kept rising. When the NSF realized just how successful the project was, they took over in 1961. The original society became just an advisor, and this completely screwed things up. One of the scientists said that it was a lengthy and unattractive trail of bickering, bitterness, and short-sightedness. They wouldn't even decide what exactly they wanted to do and whether they even want to reach the Moho. After that, the project found the new contractor company, Brown and Root, but it was a political decision, not a scientific one. Brown and Root had no experience in deep sea drilling at all. Poor scientists had to suffer because this company didn't understand the project's goals and how hard it is. Some scientists even quit because of how annoying that was. As a result, when they calculated how much it would actually take to reach the Moho, it turned out to be about $1 billion by today's standards. This shocked absolutely everyone. The public was mocking them, which didn't help at all. Some articles called it Project No Hole and gave titles like how NSF got lost in Mohol. The final blow happened in 66. The project's most loyal supporter, Albert Thomas, passed away. Plus, the situation in Vietnam was escalating. As a result, the project was stopped after eating up tens of millions of dollars. What's even worse, this giant, impossible idea took the funding from smaller and achievable things. But it wasn't entirely for nothing. Project Moholo pioneered a new deep-sea drilling technique, which is now standard. They also inspired many new, similar, smaller ideas. And science just kept going since then. In May 2023, scientists finally achieved this dream. They actually pulled up rocks not even from the Moho boundary, but from the mantle itself. They got them from the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. So maybe one day, we'll be able to drill all the way down there. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.